Hi, and welcome to another edition of Antique Radio Archaeology. Today we're going to continue the series on test equipment restorations with the restoration of an ICO 1020 0 to 30 volt DC power supply. Now, unlike, well, it was on the shelf that fell and damaged all the other test equipment that uh, uh, I've been repairing. However, uh, the damage on this was very minimal, uh, but it had problems to begin with and I'll get into that uh, a little bit later. But right now, um, I just want to talk a little bit about the ICO company. The ICO company started in about 1945 uh, by a man named Harry Ashley. And the company existed until 1999 when it finally shut down. Uh, it started off as a test equipment kit manufacturer, kind of like Heath Kit, and they did quite a bit of... We had a storm. Now, throughout their uh, existence, they wound up uh, producing radios, transmitters, receivers for the uh, ham radio operators. Uh, they did had a stint in the 50s where they made Geiger counters, which were actually quite popular during that time. Uh, later on, they got into audio equipment like uh, tuners and, and amplifiers and things like that. But their mainstay was always test equipment, and they had a mixture of kits and, and factory produced equipment. Now, the uh, company wound up, uh, I think they got out of the audio equipment uh, in the 70s, 80s went back to test equipment, and then the last two years that the company existed, they were actually a property management company, which is kind of sad, but uh, they, they finally disbanded in 1999. But a lot of their equipment is still out there, and a lot of the test equipment is very, very well used today. So this power supply, uh, which I'm going to get into uh, here in a minute, this thing isn't quite acting the way it should and I found out the reason why is because there's been some modifications made to it and what I'm going to do is restore it back to its original configuration and hopefully that will work out the issues that I'm having with it which I'll explain here in a little bit. So when I said there was some minor damage uh, what I'm referring to is right here on the side there's just a little bit of a dent. Not a big deal. Um, this is a very simple power supply. It's all transistorized. Uh, it uses two uh, PNP transistors and the rectifiers are just a couple of diodes. Uh, very, very simple. But uh, what had happened is this model actually came with the two transistor configuration. This is also produced in a one transistor configuration. Now somebody evidently tried to convert this to the one transistor configuration and they also did something that was kind of weird. They put in a regulator. Now that you would think that's a good idea but the problem that I'm having is I can't get this thing to go down to less than a couple of volts and I need this thing to be able to go all the way from 0 volts to 30 volts well it's not it's going from about 2 volts to 6 volts well actually about 7 volts to 2 to 3 volts to 30 volts depending on where the the selector switch is so we're going to rectify that by converting it back to its original configuration and hopefully uh, that will take care of my problems. Now, they did bypass one of the transistors on it. I don't know if the other transistor was bad, um, but we're going to find out. So, let's go ahead and uh, get this thing apart. Now the two transistor 
configuration is actually an earlier version of this power supply. Um, I don't know what the advantage is of the single transistor. I've looked at the schematics and I really just don't I just don't see what the big deal is, why two transistor versus one transistor, but had they had done that conversion accurately, I don't think I'd have the problem that I have. So here we go. This is this is the issue. Now I do have a couple of capacitors that I think have been replaced, so these are probably good. I do need to replace this one. Uh, these are the two transistors, and they're different. Th they had gone to an NPN transistor, so which is the single transistor version of this. So both of these are going to have to be replaced in order to go back to the dual transistor configuration. This is the weirdness here. This is a uh, voltage regulator that they put in there and it's a 2 to 30 volt voltage regulator which explains why I can't get less than uh, 2 volts. So uh, this is going to all have to come out and I'll have to get it back to the way it's supposed to be. And hopefully the rest of these components are in good shape but uh, I can go ahead and plug this in and show you what the issues are very quickly here. Okay, and there we are. This is our 30 volt scale. And uh, yeah, that's the other thing. I don't get a full 30 volts on the meter scale. If we're looking at voltage here, that's the lowest. Actually, it's 7 volts. That's the lowest I can go on the 30 volt scale. Now when I crank it all the way up, the most I'm getting is 19 volts. Not good. Now if I switch over to the 6 volt scale, turn this on. Oops. All right, at my minimum voltage reading, I'm reading about 0.7 volts. I need it to be less than that. Now as I crank this up, it will peg the meter and it'll keep going. That is weird. But yeah, this is this just isn't right. It's all kind of kind of messed up there, so that's what we're going to try and fix. So, um, some things I need to do uh, from what I've found is I do need to replace the lamp in there. That light is not working. Uh, I'm going to replace this power cord. It's very, very short. So I've got a replacement power cord here. Um, I do have a replacement capacitor here. Those are the transistors that need to go in here. And along with those transistors you always have to replace the mica insulators and I also have some heat sink compound that will help work with the insulator to dissipate the heat on those transistors. So, uh, I'm, first thing I can do is I'm going to just go ahead and cut this power cord, get it out of here so that I can move that, move this out of the way. Now, the other thing that I'm doing is, as you can see, I'm missing the handle. I did pick up a, a handle online. So I'm going to go ahead and replace that. It's four inches from here to here, so not an easy handle to find, actually, since most are three, three and a half inches. All right, so, um, yeah, I'm actually, I think I'm going to just go ahead and cut this out of here right off the bat. I don't need any of this. 
I am going to hold on to those wires. I don't know how much, which ones of those I'll need. But I will know shortly. Okay, so that regulator is out of there. So now I can better see what I've got going on here. Ah, interesting. Huh. That is interesting. Okay. I don't know if you can see this. But as you can see, there's two diodes that they're using for a rectifier. Here they've got one two, three, four, so they went ahead and built a bridge rectifier. Nice idea, less ripple voltage, but not quite compatible with what I'm trying to do here. So I may have to replace all four of those diodes, because I'm not sure what these are yet. I'm having trouble seeing them. And yeah, this wiring's a little whacked. So, all right, so I've got the transistors, I've got the capacitor. Let me see if I got some diodes. And we'll start working on getting this wiring cleaned up and replace that capacitor at least and that lamp down in here. You know, I've just come to the realization that all these resistors are missing. There's no resistor here, here. These two are gone. That one's still there, and that one's still there. Those are the only two resistors. This one here is missing. So I have to replace every one of those resistors as well. And the caps are actually wired backwards, which makes sense because we're dealing with a different... Uh, transistor so whatever they did to rewire this is really a dramatic departure from the original schematic so I'm gonna basically have to unsolder everything and almost start from scratch and here you can see this is there's nothing soldered to this side of the pot for that second transistor and the resistors are missing from the others okay so in order to make this thing right I've got to add these two diodes. I already have that capacitor, which is right here. Here's my 2K resistor that's missing. Here's my 220 ohm resistor that's missing. Here's a 100 ohm resistor here, one here, and one there. There's my two transistors. That capacitor exists, let me see, that resistor here exists, that's the, this one right here, that one here exists, and then I'm going to add, of course, the lamp. So yeah, I'm almost, <laughs> I'm almost totally rebuilding this entire power supply from scratch. Okay, let's take a look at, uh, some issues that I ran into. Now, unfortunately, um, one of the things that I've had to do is I'm working off a set of schematics that somebody back in 2013 had uh, done. The ones that come with the manual for this particular power supply only shows a one transistor version somebody went ahead and created a two transistor schematic for it which they did a really really good job but some things were throwing me for a loop uh, this was not making sense over here for one thing uh, those diodes are reversed it's showing negative here that would be positive and even if that was so it's coming to the, neg the negative side of this capacitor and, yeah, something's just not right. And the other thing is tapping off of this side of that transformer coming all the way to your positive. That 
again that's just not making sense so I happen to have another power supply just like it this one is fully functional and working correctly and I was able to go in and pretty much map out how all the components are laid out here and I was going to go ahead and use this to lay the components out in this and I'm finding out that this is not wired like this so after spending some time on it what I figured out was a couple of things first of all this right here that connection does not should not exist the center tap comes off of here it is connected to that fuse there is also another 220 ohm resistor right here so with all that being said uh, that brings if I bring this over to here drop it down turn those diodes around it's all starting to make sense that that there goes away so I wound up redrawing this and here's what I came up with I went ahead and reversed the diodes now it's all making sense you got a full wave rectifier here coming in got your positive voltage down here negative voltage going up through here you've got the additional diode or the additional uh, resistors and also that, that was the other thing that uh, lamp and resistor reversed on there and I moved the ground up or the uh, chassis ground up to here which is cr correct for the way this thing is wired so this matches this so now that I have all that laid out and I have the component layout drawn up here I can go ahead and start pulling everything out of this power supply get it ready to uh, reassemble in the correct configuration. Okay, I'm going to start getting rid of some of this wiring. There's just so much not correct here. I do need to get rid of this. Got a lot of this stuff out of here. Got everything kind of cleaned up a little bit. Now, a couple things. Let me go ahead and I guess we can go ahead and remove these uh, transistors. Now one thing I did want to check out is I want to make sure that that lamp there works. I don't think it was hooked up correctly. So there's a quick way of doing this. I'm go ahead and this is a 22k resistor. Going to one end of it. Here's the other end, right there. 
there. I'm not shorting out anywhere. Nope. Okay. Now we're dealing with high voltage here, so you need to be very, very careful. Power strip turned off. I'm going to turn it on. There it is. As you can see, it does light. So, yeah. All right. So now I know. Okay, so I went ahead and marked my emitter, base, and collector, emitter, base, collector on these, so I can get ready to start doing some soldering here. Alright, so what I need to do is I need to get this over to here, this goes to the switch back here. That needs to go in there, and then I have another wire that's going to go up here to this emitter. So that one's going to go right here too. So I got to get all three of these wires in here.
I got a few things that need to be straightened out here. Um, I went ahead and highlighted with a yellow marker all the connected wires that have been made. Some of these were pre-existing, some of them are the ones that I just did, which are these up here. Now, I'm looking at this over here, and this was definitely wired strangely. So I need to do a couple of things to straighten that out. Uh, I need to remove the capacitor from this ground connection, open those up and put them to here and here. That blue jumper needs to go away. I need to have a jumper between here and here. And this goes to the positive, which is an existing one. Okay, so I can keep that one. needs to go away. Actually, I don't need to do much with this one. I can just cut that off and connect it to here. Okay, so my camera died. <laughs> Didn't realize it. Um, what I've done is I went ahead and pulled those two, which were here, and separated them. I have them now here and here. I haven't soldered them yet. Um, and I removed the blue wire and and uh, a couple other things. So I got everything all cleaned up, ready to go. Uh, what I do need to do, I need to get my resistors. I got my 100 ohm here. There's a 100 ohm goes there. Uh, here's my two 220s. There's my 100 ohm there. I think that's it. I think I got an extra 220 here for some reason. If we look here, connected this end and soldered it. Okay, three connections. All right, 
So that one's done. This terminal. To the second one here. To this terminal. I need to have another resistor like this. resistor here, which I've hooked up half of it. I've got that 220 and then I've got a 100 ohm resistor that has to come through here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So, all I got left now is this one, which I've got to do from here to here. Go ahead and solder that connection, which is right there. going to wrap around from here over the terminal strip over here so This older wire didn't want a 10. Oh, that takes care of that wire. This wire. That capacitor. And 
got that soldered on there. So everything on this terminal strip, this terminal strip, and this side has been completed. Alright, I do have a 2K resistor that I need to get between here and here. Now since there's a straight wire coming from here to here, I'm just going to solder it from there to there. Just to make things a little easier. I don't think I'm going to mess with the... I want to go ahead and install this resistor. That needs to go here. It goes from here over to that fuse holder. Now I just want to solder really just the one end over here. And what I'll do is uh, So that takes care of this resistor right here. I still need to solder that end and then a wire over to here. So now we're getting there. Just trying to get to a point where I'm just working on this section right here, which I'm about ready to start here. takes care of this resistor here this connection here and this connection there wish I had noticed that before That saves me a little bit of work. I'm going to go ahead and hook up these diodes. 47 microfarad capacitor is already here. Those two diodes need to go there, and this is that wire from the other side that needs to go in here. Okay. So 
so that takes care of. This wire here. And half of these diodes. Really, there's not much left. Transformer wire. Let's go there. Okay. Transformer wire. So all that's wired in. All right. Now I gotta finish what I started up here. Yeah, we'll facilitate the soldering. Okay, so now I can go ahead and tighten these. goes over to that fuse. The fuse only has two wires to it. Here, that wire, there. So, final steps here. I need to get this power cable on here. Go ahead and run it through the case here. Set that back there for now. 
gonna need a strain relief, so. Adjust that later. Okay, I have two points. I gotta get this through. One is here. If I can even fit all this in the same hole. Oh yeah. Okay. Now this is not a polarized plug, which didn't have one on it to begin with. I usually like to replace them with one, but I just happen to have this one laying around. thing I do have left to do here. Just do all this, but I have a feeling these are going to be way too long. Not a big deal. Just need to find a couple of short screws. They're that long. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, I went ahead and found a couple of screws. All right, nice little handle. So, let's see, we are about ready to try this thing out. Okay, now comes the moment of truth. Uh, let's go ahead and fire this thing up. Here, I've got a dim bulb tester here. So, hopefully that'll protect it if there's anything wrong. Let's go ahead and I'll start on the 6 volt scale, I guess. Bring it up to one volt. Okay. Alright. Looking good. Two volts. It's showing a little less than two volts. But three volts. Okay, a little bit more. No, right there. That's three volts. 4 volts, right dead on, 5 volts, pretty close, and there's 6 volts right there, a little bit high. Okay, yeah, these scales aren't super accurate, but it'll get you in the ballpark. Okay, let's check the 30 volt scale. There should be 5 volts. It's a little low. Ten volts, definitely low. Fifteen. That's almost dead on. Okay, mid scale it's accurate. 20 volts. Pretty much dead on. 25. Pretty close. And 30. 
I've got it. Okay, this thing's this thing's working great. I'm real pleased with it. Okay. Well, I'll call that uh, a wrap then. Well, if there's anything that's certain in the world of antique radio restorations, that is, you can never have enough meters, signal sources, or power supplies. This wraps up another restoration, and with it, another episode of Antique Radio Archaeology. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like. Hit subscribe if you'd like to see more. In the meantime, happy restorations, everybody. Have a great day. See you next video. Bye.